Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields. I want to get into the ash from this. I want to track that where it's headed. I want to look at the levels on the Panama Canal. I want to look out in time over the next couple months. The rain totals through the weekend in the Caribbean and kind of look long term with our dry air tracker. We've got a couple issues out there. I want to get into that. This here, El Popo. This here, uh, an active volcano. Of course, it's it's been very active. It's it's active, period. But the last couple weeks, more active than usual. It's been causing a lot of problems flight issues, but again, breathing issues, issues with the crops. And uh, what we're seeing here, th this is Mexico. So here's Mexico City just off toward uh, the southeast of Mexico near Puebla. And this is a huge issue. Obviously, it's leading to a lot of fear, which it is for good reason. Again, this is a volcano that could cause massive, massive issues, and it is causing a lot of issues now. It could have some of those bigger types of eruptions, so I'll keep a very close eye on that. With that said, I'd like to just uh, track it, give you the facts on this. Now, what we're seeing here is, with this volcano lately, a lot of the uh, ash from it has been drifting more to the east and northeast. That's actually spilling over some of the ash in the Gulf of Mexico. Some of that haze moving into the Gulf of Mexico. But overall, this has been causing big issues with health, with breathing issues, right now this volcano a phase two yellow alert it's a traffic light system uh, in mexico and phase two yellow alert that's that's pretty elevated at this uh, point uh, the red the red alert that would be the highest where there would be a lot of evacuations and things uh, uh, like that so i'll keep a very close eye on this as we work our way through the weekend but again seeing that ash now that is drifting over the gulf of mexico now i want to get back here here's costa rica here's panama here's colombia so uh, we get over toward uh, uh, the uh, Caribbean. Here's the uh, Pacific. Here, the Panama Canal. Now, this has a ripple effect, even if it doesn't impact you directly. Again, this has a ripple effect uh, around the world with uh, shipping. The levels on the Panama Canal have been too low, and it's not as simple as just grabbing water from somewhere else and uh, adding it in. They have these uh, lock systems where the ships go in, and they have to raise the water so that the uh, ships could get to different levels, or on the flip side, uh, lower some of the uh, levels. So the water level is super critical. 80 six feet right now this is this scales in feet and by the time look way out in time this is a couple months from now as we get into about early to mid may 79.8 feet that may not seem like a, a big drop but it is substantial everything is substantial on the canal but overall that trend going down it has just been so dry so let me show you the dry air tracker and you see here i don't often show this this here the mid levels kind of a snapshot of what's going on above our heads the mid levels of the atmosphere and where you see this orange shading that's where it is so super dry. It's not to say we can't see a few showers. Barbados, for example, we had a couple showers uh, overnight in spots, but you could see the dry weather locked in over toward uh, Panama, even back toward where we have that uh, volcano that's uh, emitting that uh, ash that's working its way over toward the Gulf, but plenty in the way of dry air, ABC Islands, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, we've been seeing the extreme levels of uh, drought. So uh, well, again, a few showers around, a little moisture trying to pull in here. Uh, Barbados, we had a couple showers even over toward Trinidad out in Tobago, a few nearby last night pulling out of Venezuela, but the rain chance not high. What's happening is these fronts have mainly been to the north. You see it right here. These fronts passing by the U.S., parts of Canada, clipping by Mexico. And this time of year, as we get closer to the spring season, which is just now a couple weeks away, uh, what we're seeing is the front stay to the north of the Caribbean. Now, I want to zoom you. I'll take I'll zoom you around in a second, take you into uh, Canada. Here's what we're seeing. Here's this front, and watch the tail end of it. So pick a spot on the map where you are. Here's Haiti, Puerto Rico, Barbados, St. Lucia, uh, Trinidad, my friends in Jamaica here. So Jamaica is a good uh, sample. Jamaica and the Cayman Islands and Cuba, what's been happening is the fronts now are staying to the north. If this were a month or two ago, they'd be over Jamaica, Cuba, and the Cayman Islands, at least giving us a better chance of rain. But this front here will bring the potential of severe weather later today to the southeast U.S., tomorrow pushing off toward the east coast, kind of winding up here, parts of New England, Atlantic region of Canada. We're going to see some of that snow that will be moving in. But you see here the tail end of the front right here. You see it's generally to the north of Cuba just clipping by the Bahamas and even at that a lot of the action just fizzles apart. And then we'll keep an eye on our next system as we get into next week that will roll in to the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. and back toward Canada. So we're starting to see some season changes which aren't necessarily good for the wildfires that we've had in Guatemala and Suriname and just the dry conditions. So here it is. Here's a closer look then we'll jump up to the north 
this is later today. Now again, passing shower and we will take it. Haiti, we've had a couple. Dominican Republic, we'll see one or two later today. Puerto Rico, we could get a couple of showers. Seba, Stasia, maybe one or two. But here's that front. This is tomorrow. And you see that this is the bottom end of the front. Most of the energy is pulling up toward Canada. So this front, that means there's not a lot of rain. It loses its energy source. And you see here, this is by Sunday. Yeah, maybe a shower or two as we work our way into the Bahamas. Could see a shower or two uh, closer to parts of uh, Mexico, the Yucatan, Belize, maybe one or two. But the rain chance stays limited. Again, this is through Sunday. And even as we work our way into Monday, there's the tail end of the front there. And again, if this were a month or two ago, this would be a little bit more to the south, which would help squeeze out a lot of rain, but just not where we are in time. Now, looking at the rain totals, three-day rain totals, not much at all. If you do get some rain, see some of the blue on the map, at best, that would be 25 millimeters of rain or an inch of rain, but that's really pushing it. Again, many of us, if we get a passing shower, five millimeters, maybe 10 millimeters of uh, rain. So rain chance staying very low as a whole the next few days. And I'll, I'll track that deeper as we get into next week. Now, here's uh, New England. You get back toward uh, the mid-Atlantic of the U.S., the Atlantic region of Canada. Again, one system trying to wrap up. This is later this afternoon. So Newfoundland, uh, what I've been showing you the last few days, that system tries to uh, move away. Keep me posted in the comments on what you got or, or didn't get. So one system moves away. But here's the next one, Toronto down toward Pittsburgh. This is the same system that will bring the chance of severe weather to the southeast U.S. today, bringing that rain tomorrow over toward the Mid-Atlantic and parts of uh, New England. And then you see on the back side of it, some of that snow that's possible, the cold air wrapping in over toward Maine. And then as we go through the day tomorrow, this will just pre uh, progress across Prince Edward Island, uh, Nova Scotia. You get over toward New Brunswick. You see, again, very similar to what we just had. Some spots get a cold rain. Others will see some of that snow that will be wrapping in. So one system after another. Now, Jamaica, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, as I was highlighting, us that rain chance stays kind of low that front that's moving in, that'll stay mainly up to the north. Rain chance also low, Trinidad and Tobago. We've had a couple showers the last uh, two days in a few spots, uh, but again, uh, too dry. We'll still take it though. Uh, Barbados, we had a few showers overnight, 20 to 30% chance in St. Lucia. The next few days, isolated shower chance. Same thing in Grenada. We just work our way uh, from St. Vincent to the Grenadines and then we'll slide to the north. The rain chance stays small. And I was showing you that. Here's Martinique. We get over toward Dominica, Guadalupe, about a 30% chance of a shower this weekend. So there'll be some around. Let me know if you do get a shower or if you just stay dry through the weekend. I'll be monitoring those uh, comments. Uh, Guadalupe. Now, Northeastern Caribbean, the rain chance, as you can see, Antigua, Barbuda. We work our way back towards St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat, also low. Drought levels aren't bad. It's dry because it's the dry season. But we're going to keep an eye on this because uh, we could see the drought levels getting a little bit worse. Anguilla and St. Bart's, you see how that rain chance stays on the low side. And we're looking at about a 20% chance St. Mark and Seba and Stacia. About a 30% chance of a few pop-up showers in Puerto Rico as we go through the weekend. U.S. and British Virgin Islands passing shower. Most of that front staying up to the north. Dominican Republic isolated shower in that small chance as we work our way back for my friends in Haiti. The Bahamas rain chance stays small. Best chance northern and central Bahamas. Again, yeah, the front trying to slide by, but it's really dying out. Turks and Caicos were mainly on the dry side and mainly on the dry side in Cuba. Again, the action staying just to the north. 10% chance of a shower in Belize today, but about a 30% chance on Sunday. Cancun, Cozumel, Yucatan, and Mexico may catch a shower too. Wouldn't be a big issue. Again, just passing variety. Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. Rain chance staying at that, that general kind of even uh, 20% where we may see one or two. Bermuda, it's uh, going to be the tail ends of fronts as well. Uh, a couple of the showers winding down. Then we'll keep an eye on our next front. Costa Rica, rain chance about 30 to 40% and back toward Panama. Panama rain chance though still low. Guyana, a few isolated showers. Suriname, best chance would be southern zones. Keeping an eye on the fires and again the drought conditions persist as we work our way back toward northern Venezuela. So keeping an eye on the drought, uh, the crops, uh, the uh, livestock, uh, all an issue. Keeping an eye on the wildfires, rain chance staying on the low side, uh, Panama Canal, showed you those levels projected to drop all the way into May. In tracking those areas of ash coming out of Mexico, moving over the Gulf of Mexico. Hurricane season starts June 1st. We'll put that on the uh, back burner. I'll monitor kind of the outlook for that as we go ahead. So thank you for liking the videos, uh, subscribing to this channel, being part of this weather community, leaving your comments. Uh, keep an eye on those uh, throughout the weekend. I do appreciate you building this uh, weather community, and I hope you have a good weekend ahead.